Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. What investments are you making now for those days? Man of God, does somebody believe in you enough to say, I will never watch you in shame? No matter what it is, I will come and wrap my arms around you and make sure that I stand by you to see that this rent issue or this financial issue gets out of the way. Can I tell you, depending on yourself by yourself to come out of affliction and challenges may end up burying you there. Sometimes you will need, even if you are Jesus, you will need Simon of Cyrene to help you carry that cross to Golgotha. And woe betides even a savior who does not have help. Is someone learning? Build godly relationships. Be kind. Be loving. Don't just be anointed. Don't just be a prayer warrior. Don't just be a word giant. In the face of affliction, people do not care. I have taught you. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. People will not come to help you just because you're a prayer giant, just because you're a word giant. Sometimes it's that sense of compassion and honor and empathy. And you will be surprised how people will arise to come to your rescue. May you never lack helpers. I'm prophesying to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, may you never lack helpers. That at every point in your life, may there be someone who can arise genuinely and sincerely. I've taught you, in discussing destiny helpers let me do a one minute recap i have taught you that there are four kinds of destiny helpers let me run through them very quickly number one they first are called divine connectors they do not have the solution to your challenges but they know who has that solution and they always are bridges for instance the slave girl connecting naaman to elisha Divine connectors do not have the power to solve your problem, but they know somebody who knows somebody who can connect you. And statistic tells us that everybody is maximum of four people away from where your solutions are. No matter how serious that problem is, four people strategically arranged will connect you and your solution. Number two, men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers, men of influence. These are men who have the credibility, they have the track record, they have the ears of the territory. Their endorsement about you and their speaking over you can rewrite age-long narratives in a moment. One person can sign a signature and say, truly, this man is supposed to go to prison, but at my influence, I write something and that's it can I tell you God still works with men who, and there are men who are gatekeepers whether they are believers or not I've told you that there are gatekeepers you don't cast away God grants you favor to be able to pass through them some of you have been grounded at this point afflictions have remained indefinite in your life because you do not understand the power of destiny relationships the power of destiny helpers men of influence one person his signature can give you a job his signature can veto whatever limitation and grant you access everything you see on earth is controlled by men behind every system is a man and that man has a will he has an emotion even if he's the unrighteous judge that was in Luke 18 a man who does not fear God nor regard men that's a dangerous man may you never meet such a man in your life I say may you never meet such a man in your life a man that does not fear God and does not regard men you can't talk to him about God you can't bribe you can't do anything you're in trouble does not fear God does not regard men but the Bible says a weak woman came and use a strategy to weary that man away until he avenged her adversaries there is always a man behind every system on earth and let me tell you when God wants to help you he gives you access to great men don't insult great men don't insult rich men 
Don't insult people who have paid the price to rise to certain positions. Rather, obtain wisdom by God and say that God should strategically position you. Joseph, you need Pharaoh to manifest your destiny. Daniel, you need Darius, you need Nebuchadnezzar to manifest your destiny. And these are systems and people who God himself recognizes. Are we together now? Number three, you need gifted men. I'm teaching, I'm just doing a quick recap on destiny helpers to buttress point four. You need gifted men. Especially for many of us here who are businessmen or even men in ministry. One gifted person can save you financial leakages. One gifted person can bring efficiency to your life beyond your imagination. The best corporations in the world sometimes are behind them are a few intelligent people who are making global impact, redefining civilization. The whole corporation is sharing the glory, but the truth is that the brains behind them may not be more than four or five gifted men. Finally, and maybe not most importantly, but more importantly, burden bearers. I told you that the assignment, burden bearers are not after your titles. They are not after whoever or whatever you are. They are after you as a person. Burden bearers may not be able to move you forward, but they have an assignment to stop you from going back. These are men who will cry with you. These are people who will see your nakedness and still cover you and cry with you. May God send burden bearers to your life. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. So the charge here is to build godly relationships and to make meaningful contributions within the spiritual family that you find yourself. You are in koinonia here. Make, I'm not talking of finances. Finances is about the least contribution you can make. Your prayer, your participation, that through your life, someone is loving Jesus. Through your life, someone is encouraged. Someone who would have left the things of God is now drawn back through your life. Hallelujah. Can I give you the last? Number five. What is the fifth biblical strategy? When you are in a season of adversity of any kind, engage the prophetic. Engage the prophetic. Engage the prophetic. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved one more time and by a prophet the lord it was the lord that did the deliverance but he used a prophet and by a prophet was he preserved every time believers went through seasons of adversity seasons of affliction and tragedy midwifing their breakthrough were the ministry of prophets is it the exodus of israel from egypt is it the axe head floating in 2 Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7? Hallelujah. Is it the wife of the Shunammite? Uh, I mean the, 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 the wife of the sons of the prophet? Is it the Shunammite woman? Is it the widow in Zarephath? You can name all of these people. Is it Samaria? The land of Samaria going through famine. Every time there was affliction, a negative season, whether to people, whether to nations, whether to businesses. Affliction can never turn to victory, isolating the prophetic. Genuine, authentic, apostolic, and prophetic ministry has a role to turn people's captivity around. It is a mandate and a mantle that God has placed. Listen to me. Let me assure you, God has anointed men. God has laid his hand upon men. Men that if you believe and open up your heart to receive of the spiritual investment in their life, I guarantee you like night becomes day, affliction can turn to victory right before your eyes. The prophetic is a 
potent ministry in spite of abuses when i say the prophetic is a combination of the apostolic and the prophetic yes there are abuses across the globe yes we hope that god especially in africa will fix some of these excesses and these mistakes here and there but do not make a mistake of throwing the baby and the bath water the, Jesus needed three major prophets in his life to emerge. One, Simon of Cyrene. Two, Anna the prophetess. Three, John the Baptist. Jesus as the word. You ignore the prophetic, especially in the times of adversity, you do that to your detriment. One, prophetic declarations. Do you know, I've told you, when I sit back and I watch people share testimonies, you would think that because God used me to birth this testimony and this has happened so frequently, I should be used to it. Sometimes I stand as a spectator and I'm watching the wonder-working power of God that with one utterance backed up by the anointing of the Spirit, like that which will come upon someone this night, in the name of Jesus, that you'll see doors just like that. Because, listen... The Bible says he confirmed the words of his messengers. He confirmed the words of his messengers. One prophet stands over Samaria and says, by this time tomorrow. He was not speaking to a company. He was not speaking to a region. He was speaking to a whole nation. And a foolish advisor stood by the king and said, no, this cannot happen. Let me tell you the truth. Be careful what you say cannot happen. The kingdom of God is a compendium of infinite possibilities waiting for you to engage with understanding. And one of it, I assure you, is the prophetic. I have watched with all humility people rise from grass to grace by the, at the instance of the prophetic. I am a beneficiary of the prophetic myself. speak and doors just open oh let it be well with you let doors be open and that's it i'm telling you it is it's still a wonder how the prophetic works that one declaration and the spirit of wisdom moves in motion and even if it is four lepers the holy ghost will begin to arrange insignificant conditions that insist and ensure that you come out of that situation you're not the first to go through a financial situation. You're not the first to go through an embarrassing situation. You're not the first to go through a health challenge. Listen, the Bible says the thing that was is the thing that is and is the thing that is to come. I guarantee you by the integrity of scripture, there is absolutely nothing happening to you that is happening the first time. The Bible chronicles men and women who weird afflictions until they wrought victory out of them. That time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shot the mouth of lions women who receive their dead back to life the bible says the things that are written are for time they are written for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope hope that i will come out of this hope that i will have the last laugh hope that the ministry will rise again even if you are samson your hair can grow again even if they pluck out your eyes listen there are three things they, would, they were supposed to remove from Samson to destroy him. Satan did not remove the third one. And that was what brought the greatest victory. His hair, his eyes, his hand. His hair was cut off. His eyes was plucked out. But his hand was left. And it was with that hand, he said, God, no matter what I've done wrong, grant me one last time. And while the hair was growing back, the eyes could not grow back but the hand came and he pushed the Bible says he killed more people in his death even if you are Mephibosheth who went through I've taught you about Mephibosheth the mystery of the carelessness of a midwife Mephibosheth's tragedy was not because of his carelessness a midwife did not handle him well and he made him crippled there are situations you may be having right now that you do not have any active role in making it happen. They met Jesus and said, who seen that this man was born blind? Was it him or his father? Jesus answering said, neither, but that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. The Bible talks about a widow who was losing all the men in her life. 
had lost her husband, now had lost her only son. Her life was shattered. But just when they were about to cross the gate of Nain, here comes Jesus. When you see Jesus, you see hope. When you see Jesus, you see restoration. When you see Jesus, it, it's a symbol that light can come at the end of darkness. Listen to me. A 33-year-old body was hanging on the cross and you would think that was the end of it. Even Satan believed that was the end. Men believed that was the end. Kings believed that was the end. Principalities and powers believed that was the end. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. Provided you are righteous, there is a guarantee that the Lord, that the Lord shall deliver him from them all. From them all. Financial afflictions, marital afflictions, ministerial afflictions. My Bible says, Many, not few, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hallelujah. Sit down. We'll soon pray. One of the most tragic renditions of affliction in the Bible was the story of the man Job. You would think that after losing his sons and his finances, that would be the end of it. The Bible says another conference was held in the heavenlies. And again, Satan demanded to touch and afflict his body. And boils began to come out of the body of Job that could not be explained. Everybody ran away from him. Do you know what it means to be the greatest man in the East? It's like maybe, let's say for want of what, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and then you see them on the streets of somewhere in the United States, and you say, what happened to you? And he says, in one day, not one year, one day, everything crashed. The friends of Job ran away. The family ran away from him. Everything that was, where were the people that he raised in his journey to becoming great? They ran away. It was only him and his wife. The same way it was only Jesus and Mary. And then the Bible says, Job 42, hallelujah, and verse 10. This is the Jesus we serve. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. I don't know who I'm prophesying to, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I call upon the God of Jeshurun, the one who is able to turn night to day. Let every captivity in your life give way in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every captivity in your life give way in the name of Jesus. I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? I'm a winner man, a winner man. Is one my battle for me? So when you see any believer, whether a man of God, whether a businessman, whether a family going through affliction. Just ask them, are you the righteous? If they dare say yes, begin to dance and rejoice in the midst of the storm. And they will be wondering, what is the meaning of this madness? You tell them that I came for koinonia and I heard a message that many are the afflictions of the righteous. But there is a guarantee that the Lord, not an angel, the Lord will deliver him from them all. Hallelujah. Let's finish Job 42, 10. And the Lord turned, give it to us, the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much. So God can do that. God can go that far to give me twice what I have lost. He never said twice money, twice influence. Twice anointing, twice joy, twice grace. Anything a man lose, the Bible says God can restore. Don't you think I'm motivating you? This is a prophetic word that no matter what it is, listen. You may say apostle, but the person I'm talking about has died. God can bring ten fathers, ten husbands. God can bring one person that is equivalent to ten sons. I know you may never see your loved one again because they have gone but you find comfort number one that you will meet them again but that in the interim as far as shame is concerned it is not you that will see shame
I can imagine passing through a place called Lodaba. You would have seen a popular crippled man called Mephibosheth. And you look at him and say, what happened to you? Then he would begin a story. It's not my fault. Maybe I would have been a great man, but the midwife, as my mother was bringing me forth, the midwife was careless. And because of the carelessness of that midwife, my limbs became crippled, never to walk again. But one day, this same Lord again, a king is sitting in the palace and he becomes restless. The king called David, out of the many things that would have occupied his mind, he begins to think and say, is there anyone in the house of Saul that I may show kindness? Saul is long dead and he spent his life persecuting me because the mantle for kingship had transferred to me. However, is there any man in his house? And they said, there is nobody. Oh, however, there is one crippled man called Mephibosheth. And immediately he sent for Ziba. He said, Ziba, go to Lodeba. Go and fetch that crippled man. You did not bring anything unclean to the palace of the king. But he said, for this one, you are exempted. They brought the man and he thought they were going to kill him. What have I done now? I don't even have the energy to fight or look for trouble. Why is the king looking for me? So this is how my life is going to end. Not knowing that this God, once you are the righteous, the Bible says that the Lord will deliver you from every affliction. He brought him to the palace. Listen, when he brought him to the palace, he said, Ziba, you have 15 sons. Their assignment to be to farm and make sure that there's endless supply for this crippled called Mephibosheth. But as for you, you will dine with me here all the days of your life. So don't be surprised that after this service, someone calls you and says, I don't know what was happening to my spirit, but in the name of Jesus, God has said to stand by you in ministry. God has said to restore the battle you have been fighting for 10 years, for 20 years, finally comes to an end. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Look at me. Never become ashamed of your battles. Mm -mm. It is common to all men. Fight the marital battles with dignity. Fight the academic battles with dignity. I know that you may be an orphan. Stand in integrity and fight the fight of faith. Don't act as if you are, it's, it's a unique thing. Oh, you are a man of God. And probably it looks like ministry is not growing. Don't be ashamed. Stand tall and fight it with dignity. I'm a man of God. But four of my children are wayward. And it's, it's a bad testimony. Don't worry. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. You fight with faith. Lord, I dedicated these children to God Almighty. Now I hear that they are drinking all around and wasting their life. I call upon the one who turns the affliction of the righteous. And you begin to pray. And sometimes you may be discouraged. And you find comfort within the body of believers. Listen. Let me advise you. And I'm doing this by responsibility. Let me advise you. Make sure as a believer, you do not add to the pain of people in church. Are we together now? When you hear that people are going through things and issues in their lives, your assignment is not to be a rumor monger multiplying people's pain. Okay, yes, the child is behaving. He's not a responsible person. He's all around doing all kinds of things. What can we do as a contribution? That's a believer's response. I may not know the family, but let's hold hands and invest a two minutes prayer. Oh Lord, for the sake of your name, let this man of God not see shame. And all of a sudden, they will tell you that the child came for koinonia. And it did, did not matter what overflow he was seated. That the power of God fetched him out and that was the end of that demonic thing. And you watch that one Saul now becoming Paul. Listen, I don't claim to know everything, but let me tell you sincerely, I have watched God transform people. I have watched people's night become day. 
I have watched the relegated in every dimension become nobles, become people of dignity and honor. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do? Jesus. One more time. Listen. He's the creator of the universe. What can you do? What can you do? Jesus. You're the name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? Jesus. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, look at me. If you had seen some of us, maybe some 15, 17, 18 years ago, you would never imagine that would be the same people being used by God. I don't know who has concluded about you. I don't know what devil. I know you may not carry a semblance of the palace, but when you are chosen, you are chosen. It's as simple as that. The lifter of men, the lifter of men, the one who can wipe away the tears of men. Listen, listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you something good can come out of Nazareth? Whatever Nazareth means to you, Apostle, right now, I'm in a network of all kinds of problems. I have financial problems. Maybe I'm suffering with the police. Maybe in ministry. Perhaps you've not even been doing ministry properly. You are just playing all kinds of games around ministry and things have not been working well and your life has plunged down right now. Like Samson, I assure you, provided you can answer that name righteous. My Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mama, hear me. I know you have cried and you have cried over your children, cried over your job, promotion that is due 10, 20 years you've not been lifted. You are looking for promotion when God is talking of restoration. There is a big difference between promotion and restoration. Promotion means to go higher. Restoration means to gain time, to be brought back to where you would have been. Hallelujah. I want you to believe this because the next five minutes I'm going to pray and prophesy over your life from the depth of my spirit. We have been given the grace to bless, to speak and to create possibilities. This is the assignment of the prophetic. And listen, don't you sit down and say, Apostle, you don't know the trouble I'm in. I'm owing 10 billion, 100 days. Even if it's 10 naira, it's still faith that will bring you out. Apostle, can I rise again as a man of God? I started walking in the prophetic, but I got, I dappled into all kinds of things. And right now, it looks like that grace is not there. We're wrongly mentored and we're just playing games. Provided you answer that name righteous, something can still happen. How about those trusting God for the fruit of the womb? How about those trusting God to end all kinds of yokes and curses, family curses, marital curses, financial curses, ministerial curses? This is why he sent you here. This one thing I know about God is that God lifts, is that God restores, is that God is able to wipe the tears of men. That you look at your former self and you cannot even know again. That people look at your life and your life becomes a sermon. Everybody who looks at your life, a series can come out of your life. And people can say, you mean this is what God can do? Everything I've said is found in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. I will hold on through the storm. I will hold on to your word. 
My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of man The lifter of man No matter what I'm going through I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of man of God you will rise again because you are the righteous businessman you will rise again because you are the righteous I speak to every family here north east south and west you will rise again ah that statement e cupboard that has been used over your life the departure of the glory that men look at your life and it looks like is a warning and a lesson to others this God that you call Olowo Bogoro, the one that can turn the life of men around. When God arises from his throne, he says, let God arise, let God arise, let God arise, and all his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and financial affliction scattered. Let God arise and every curse and every yoke be scattered. Can I tell you, let men laugh at you while you look to Jesus. Let men laugh at you while you pray. Let men laugh at you while you speak the word. Let men laugh at you while you enjoy the comfort and the blessing of the church. Let men laugh at you while you receive the prophetic. You have received the spiritual combination. Victory is a formula. Something plus something plus something plus something is what equals the manifestation of victory. Lord, you took my pain away, and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm not wasting your time. I want you to listen very carefully to me. There are many of you here, as beautiful as your clothes may look, as wonderful as your faces may look, it's like there is, you are, you are being torn apart by situations. Maybe someone is watching me from a hospital. You have served God with all your life, but here you are by yourself or with a loved one and literally that loved one is going or maybe there is a family right now that has been bereaved and as i'm speaking right now people are just crying and saying god where were you you've taken the pain and the sorrow away you've given me peace and denial no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my everything oh man me please look at me do not be afraid of your wounds no when you see a patient in the hospital about to go through a surgical procedure no matter how healthy that patient is before that time you lie down as though you are helpless 
and then once the anesthesia is given sometimes the patient is even sleeping losing consciousness and watch what happens the doctors can be there for hours removing things replacing things all kinds of bypasses happening and at that point if they told you that were a human being you would not even believe it i've had the opportunity to watch a few delicate surgeries where they had to literally take part of a man's skull out and walk on the brain walk on several things you know remove tumors and all of that and sometimes you see heart bypass surgeries and all kinds of complicated surgeries for hours and literally you are watching a supposed dead body there you would think that body will never come back to life and while the doctors are working sometimes they themselves become afraid because of what they see but then eventually they seal that person up and in a few hours the person just wakes up and pain and from one moment to the other and after a few months that same person is running around and you cannot if you will never believe that person was once there can i tell you the truth you are not the first to fail in ministry everybody has had a share of, of failure and pain you are not the first to fail in family i know your marriage is about to tear apart all kinds of things are happening and you are wondering lord but i love you i've served you all my life probably you are someone you are a student you are not doing well you love the lord you have options to compromise i was touched when i heard the testimony of the gentleman who was here said he bought all kinds of rams because you are looking for results and you see the thing sometimes with the body of christ is that we're experts at multiplying the pain of people when you find people who are going through seasons and moments of pain this is a call to the body of christ we must learn to be people of love it does not bring glory to god when we continue to celebrate the pain the downfall whatever it is of one another that's not the way the kingdom works once upon a time the disciples were going with jesus and they saw some other people doing ministry and they did not understand what they were doing and the disciples requested for permission from jesus should we call down fire on them because you are the only one it's only your voice that should be heard you are jesus and truly jesus was the voice and yet jesus said do you not know what spirit you are of in other words that's not part of your ministry i'm here to heal i'm here to mend i'm here to lift i'm here to bind man of god don't be ashamed of the fact that you are serving the lord and it looks like there are financial issues don't worry the god of heaven is bringing wisdom and is helping you you may become the discussion of many people but it's good they are aware so that there will be witnesses when you rise they will say this one is not fake i saw it i saw the man needing millions of dollars for their building and i i saw how god raised people mysteriously i saw how the children none of them could go to school because of poverty but i also know through their life what favor is that one person stepped into the family and rewrote the story i don't know what you are going through but the lord sent me this morning and this this night to speak to you and to let you know that the word righteous and the word affliction is not strange the word righteous and the word affliction sometimes can go hand in glove but it is defeat that should not be that you never never settle and say i am finished don't use that word for yourself jesus already said it for you and he never said i am finished he said it is finished you are not permitted to say i am finished you only say it is finished you may cry but i want you to know that god is the lifter of men my life is a testimony god raised some of us to be an inspiration to a generation that you should not make a mistake to doubt god only a fool will say there is no god if you ever doubt whether god can help men my life it is written on my life ebenezer god who can help men hallelujah 
So as you see the businessman right now, battling with loans, battling with trouble, what you should do as a believer is to invest prayer and to encourage them. You will come out of it. A politician who lost election, maybe somebody who things didn't work out for, don't find joy in adding to the pain of people. It is an antichrist Luciferian spirit. Are we together? Don't worry, man of God. Oh, I hear you were doing ministry, playing games and doing all kinds of things, but I'm happy that you have now repented genuinely. You can start from where you are and the God of heaven can lift you with the dignity of kingdom integrity. I hear you are a business person and you lost the deal. Things have gone bad. I hear you are a lady who, who, who always have to sleep around to raise money, house rent, but now I hear you have made up your mind to work with God. Don't feel bad. God can help you right from where you are. Can I tell you? When anybody laughs at you, just verify if you are still the righteous. Once you find out that you are the righteous, give God praise. Because I can assure you that sooner or later, anybody who laughed at you will have to bury his head in shame forever. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.